going to kind of do a couple more examples. And so you will actually then have a little more time in between classes and recitation, and I'll turn it into recitation. Okay? So we can talk about it, think about it. You can um, fine tune your answers, complete it, and then you'll give it to Owen in today's recitation. And then you can go over, um, it'll take maybe half a period to go over some of those questions, and he'll, you can have a discussion about them. The second half of recitation will be a quiz on these bar type things. Okay? Yeah? What's that? Uh, it's on your schedule. So you should be enrolled in one of the recitations, and it's in your schedule. There's a noon and a 1.30, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's a noon recitation and a 1.30. Okay, how about graphing calculator? So is, is that clear? So you're going to hand in your homework in recitation. Gives you a little more time to finish it up after what we talk about today. How about graphing calculator? How many people were successful getting graphing calculator? Lots of you. Okay, if you haven't done this yet, all the information you need is um, on the Blackboard announcements, including at the bottom there. This is the registration information. Okay, this will be good to uh, the end of September, I think, so that it's possible some of you will drop, and then that will that will run out. But then if you stay in the class, we'll get you a permanent permanent license to have the software, okay? September? I don't know, some, sometime. What's that? Oh, not September, right. Okay, maybe March or February or something like that, right? Questions about loading up graphing calculator. If you have a laptop, put it on your laptop, and then I'll be letting you know when to bring your laptop to class. Okay, so we talked about homework. Talked about uh, oh, how the pretest. Everyone, did everyone take the pretest? Okay, if you didn't, if you forgot, just contact me, and we'll. You'll have to come to my office, and do your penance there. Okay. Any questions about administrative st type stuff? Okay, that means we're doing something right. So let us let's go to this. Let's start off with another one of these bars examples. I think this is the one I want. Okay, so we're talking about rates and division. Here we go. We talked about how division, result of a division, the quotient, is represents relative size of one quantity in relation to another. So here, a car traveled at constant speed. It traveled 1829 feet in 19 seconds. Question is, how many feet did it travel in each second? So I want you to create a bar diagram that, and go through a process using the bars to answer this question, OK? So the process is the important thing, using the bars to work it through and to say how many uh, how many feet did it travel in each second if it traveled 18, 29 feet in 19 seconds? Use the bars. Okay, find a partner, 
Share what you did. Talk to each other. Okay, so periodically through class as you're working, I'm going to be calling rolls, so just a little bit at a time. So keep talking. Where's Jacob? Okay. Kaiser. Colin. Colin Barnabas. <laughs> Olivia. Ch uh, Hui. Hui Chen. H U I, first name H U I. Autumn, she's, like she's gone today. Peter. How you? Did I say it right? How you? How you? Tyler. <coughs> Got it right last time. Adonijah. Is that right? Adonijah. Julie Duran. Samantha. Hi. Did I say it right? Hi. Hi. Chen Rui. Chen Rui. Daniel. Oh, sorry. Her Herder. Is this Herder back here? Okay. Anthony. Ignacio. Anthony here? Elizabeth Judd. Right. Tyler King. Tyler King. Yeah. Hang Ku. David Lee. Okay, David. You're up. Did you start out with a bar diagram like this? Yes. And what was the first thing that you did in the process of using this bar diagram? So, and each interval was? So. Is this how you started? Okay, so what is one second relative to our total time? What is one second relative to our total time? That's one nineteenth of our total time, right? So, Samantha, where's Samantha? Where do you go from there? So if, if, if one second is one nineteenth of our total time, then how would you go from there? Okay, she's divided the top bar into 19 segments. So if one nineteenth is is if one second is one nineteenth of our total time, then we're asking what is one nineteenth of the distance, right? One nineteenth of eighteen twenty nine. And so that's that's that distance that the car travels in one second. Okay? And you notice it's a quotient, right? It's a quotient, 1829 divided by 19. Okay, so this is why that's the process that helps you understand why you divide distance by time to get speed. The amount that you travel every second, that's speed, that's rate, right? So that process is why. Um, helps you understand why. Why do you divide distance by time to get rate? And some of you might have put this in your calculator. That that quotient is 96.3. Okay, 96.3. If 96.3 is a quotient, how can it be thought of as relative size? Talk to the person next to you. So think or think about that for a second. Talk to the person next to you. How can it be thought of as relative size? Because that's what we're saying the result of division is, relative size. Okay, think about it, and then talk.
just talking about the number 96.3. The number 96.3, how is it relative size? The number 96.3, how is it relative size if it's a, because it's a quotient? Okay, see DJ, where's Andrew? Andrew, this one, Andrew. Stanley, Lebanski. Zayu. Rohit. Rohit. Nicole. Richard Martin. Katie Massey. Kobe. Kobe Maverick. It's Kobe here. Megan McCrea. Marcus. Judith Murphy. All right, Judith. 96.3. How can it be thought of as relative size, that quantity, relative size? It's one nineteenth of the feet, like relatively. But the number 96.3, how is that a relative size? Olivia, what do you think? Okay, good. I'm glad I asked, okay? Anyone think they can articulate, communicate? How is 96.3? That number a relative size. What is relative size? What do you mean by relative size? Okay. What about that? Well, I think what you well, this is how I'm taking it. I'm thinking um, there are nineteen ninety six point threes and a thousand eight hundred and twenty nine. Is that like kind of how you're taking it or relative? Mm -hmm. No, it's just this value right here. So we don't have to bring in any other values. We we did a division problem and we got an answer. Ninety six point three. We're saying, if we're claiming that division, the result of division is relative size, how is that number a relative size? So, what's your name? Adelaide. Adeline? Adelaide. 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 Like lemonade. Like lemonade. lemonade. Okay, Adelaide. All right, Adelaide. <laughs> it's very pretty. <laughs> um, it's a relationship between um, distance and time, so it's like by dividing the information for it to like, take one second and make it. It's like a relationship with, if you take the total of the distance. Okay. Okay, it's a relative. Okay, it's, it's a size. Yep, yeah, it's a relative size of feet and seconds. Someone else had your hand up. Go for it. Okay. Okay. So now we're now we're honing in on it. There was one more hand up. Who else? Went? Was it you in the lecture? Yeah. I was just going to say that they're proportional. Okay, they're proportional. Okay, so what was your name in the? Chelsea. Chelsea. Okay, so Chelsea, Chelsea kind of got to it. So 96.3 is the size of the distance traveled relative to one second. one second, relative to time. So basically, the amount that we travel is 96.3 times how many seconds we travel. So that's do you see? It's the relative size. So it's. It's the size of, or the magnitude of distance relative to time, or relative to one second. Does it make sense? OK. Here's another question. If 96.3 is a quotient, how can it be thought of as measuring one quantity in the units of another quantity? So a slightly different way to think about it, because this is also the way to think about quotient is measuring one quantity in the units of another. Think about it and then talk. <clears throat> Where's Andrew Myers? <coughs> Adelaide we saw. Ramazan. Helios. Helios. I'll get it. I will. Chunzi. Savannah. Lauren R. Jatia. Chelsea, we talked to Lauren, Cindy, Hi. Stephanie, Sandoval, Daniel. All right, Daniel, how can it? How can ninety-six point three be thought of as measuring one quantity in the units of another? Uh huh.
Okay? So when we're saying measuring one quantity in units of other, which quantity are we measuring in the units of the other? Nicole? Uh, the second strength, or the second are we measuring feet in the units of time, or are we measuring time in the units of feet? Sorry, dis are we measuring distance in the units of time, or are we measuring time in the units of distance? Um, Marcus? Distance in units of time, because we know that it's 96.3, which is the distance <coughs> of, of one second. Exactly, yeah. So 96.3 is a distance, right? In the units of time, in the, so it's in the units of one second. That's the distance we travel in one second. So we're saying we're measuring how much distance we travel in the units of one second. If we measured it in the units of 10 seconds, what would that value be if we measured the distance in the units of 10 seconds? What would that value be? 963. If we measured distance in the, in the units of 10 seconds, it would be 963. And if we measured distance in the units of a tenth of a second, the answer would be 9 point, the, that distance would be 9.63 measured in tenths of seconds. Okay. Okay, so a plane travels 4,012 4, feet in 0 .002 seconds. How far would it travel in one second? So how do we think about this? And the question is, do we still divide? Do we still divide? So go, you work on it. So when, when a the plane travels 4,012 feet in 0 .002 seconds, how far would it travel in one second? Go. Amos, Connor, Connor Simpson, Christopher Solis, Daniel, St. Germain, Joshua, Ivan, Ivan S. No, Ivan, Corey, I see. Christina, Trin, Lionel, so. Wanting Wang. Wanting. Z Wang. Talia. Did I say it right? Talia. 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 Sharon. Sharon Wu. Christina Zambrano. She. Chi Zhao. Am I close? Chi? Chi. Yeah, I know. Do you have it? Do you have, do you have an English nickname? Do you keep it? What is it? Eric. What's the bottom bar going to represent? Let's make it one second. Because if we make it 0 0.002, we're going to be in trouble. Where's one second going to be if this is 0 0.002? Gilbert, right? OK, so we want that to be one second. That's a, that was an exaggeration. Maybe, maybe in the SRC field. OK. So one second. One. Okay, and then what next? Divide it into point zero zero two segments. Zero zero two seconds seconds. So okay. So five hundred sections. All right, so this is this is uh, one five hundredth? Yes. So we wanna take a segment that's this is point zero zero two seconds, and how does it relate to the whole time? One five hundredth or two one thousandths of one second. Corey, take it from there. So from there, um, 
times 0, 0, 0, 0.002 is equal to 4012 feet. So this whole bar up here is 4012 feet? Wrong. Wrong. Because that is 1 500th of that line. 1 500th of that line is our? Okay, so how many feet does it travel in one second? Where do we go from there? Tell me your name again. Daniel? Dan. Yeah. Dan. I, I would add three zeros to the, the top one and uh, divide that in half. And that would be... So I think what you're saying is you want to multiply by 500? Yeah, that's where I started off when I was doing it. Okay. So this segment is what related to the distance traveled in one second? One five hundredth. So how do we get the distance traveled in one second? We want 500 of those. So 500 of those. Do we still divide? Why? So why is it also still division? Because it's that many feet divided by seconds. So it's 500 feet times by 400, no, 500 seconds, 500 intervals times by 412 feet uh, in one second. That's still time, so you're still talking, you're still reasoning with multiplication. Yes, sir? Same thing? So it is still division, but it kind of requires that we use multiplicate, multiplicative reasoning to get it. Okay? It is still division of distance divided by time, but when we reason it out, we really have to see that that is, we need 500 of those, or 1 <coughs> over 0 .002 seconds of those. Okay? So yes, it is still division, we do still divide. But in the reasoning, we're really, we're really, we're really uh, kind of forced to think multiplication to, to, uh, to solve it. Okay, any questions on these problems? Uh, and you'll, you'll have time in the recitation to go over some of those homework problems, now that you've thought about them. Any questions? Okay, so um, really what we're talking about is quantities. And specifically, um, some of these examples, you should have maybe had a feel of these quantities changing, specifically changing together. So each bar is a quantity. And really how the quantities change together is kind of the heartbeat of calculus. You have two different quantities. How they change together is really the underlying idea of all calculus. Okay. So I've got two bars here, and I'm able to change. I'm able to change the length of the red bar, and then the blue quantity is going to change accordingly. Okay, it's going to change accordingly. So if I were to say, I'm going to take the the red bar to here. What you want to do is just visualize or estimate, if, if I extend the red bar, increase that quantity to out to the, where the black mark is, where is, how far will the blue bar be extended? Okay, so I'll just give you some reference points here. So this isn't precise numerical mathematics, it's just kind of an estimating exercise. So with your partner. Try to estimate where is the blue bar. <coughs> what will the new quantity of the blue bar, will, where will it end up? So, 
So where do you think the blue bar will extend to and why? So what's your reasoning? Go. Okay, Julie, where do you think? So if I extend the red bar to represent now this new quantity, where will the blue bar extend to? Around H. Okay, and what was your reasoning for that? So can you give me some reasoning for that? Okay. She said, it looks like we're going to extend the red bar by two and a half uh, um, times. And so therefore, the blue bar would extend also two and a half times. Let's see if she, how she did. How'd she do? <laughs> High five, right? All right. Did you think, so how, so, so also, some of you say H. OK, what kind of reasoning did she use? If we extend one quantity two and a half times, the other, remember what we talked about that? What is that called? Lauren? Scaling, right? This is multiplication. If we multiply one quantity by two and a half, we multiply the other quantity by two and a half. That's scaling. OK, that's scaling. OK, so if I go back here. Is there another way to think about it? What if I told you, so let me just throw that out. So anyone, is there another way to think about this? Okay, how about if I told you this was at, this quantity was had a value of four units and I was gonna move it out to 10. <coughs> and this started out at a quantity of, the quantity value of 12. So is there another way to reason about Yes, is it Elizabeth? Yeah. yeah. Go back. Beth, okay. Um the blue line is three times as long as the red line. Okay. So when it moves out to ten, the top one has to be thirty units long. Okay, she said the blue one is three times as much as the red one. And so then if the red one goes up to 10, then the blue one has to be three times as long as 30. That's what she said. What do you think? Is that the same as what, the last way of thinking about it? Is that, is that the same type of reasoning or a different type of reasoning? It's different, OK. What is that? Is that scaling? I think yes. I like it's scaling one bar to the other. OK, yeah, so but scaling is strictly what you do on one quantity. So when we talk about scaling, so that's a good, good point. So when we talk about scaling, that's just something that you do to one quantity. You take one quantity, you scale it, or you shrink it down, okay? So what is the value of 3? It's not a scalar. What is 3? It's constant, that's true. It stays constant as we change the quantities. It's a ratio. It's a ratio. Okay, so then it's what? Is it? Relative size. relative size, right? Three is the relative size of the blue bar to the red bar. It's the relative size. Or if you measure the blue bar in the units of the red bar, what would it be? How many units of the red bar give you the blue bar? Three. And so some said ratio. That's right. It's a quotient, right? So it's relative size. And so those bars always remain in that relative size of that the blue is 3 relative to the red. So this is, this, this yes would be 30. Right there. 
Okay, so two different ways of thinking about it. We, if you scale one quantity, the other gets squit scaled the same amount, or look at the relative size of the quantities, those will stay the same. Now that's, someone mentioned um, in a proportional relationship, and that's really what we're talking about. If the quantities aren't proportional, then all this stuff kind of falls apart. You need to have this proportional relationship, okay? Then you have the scaling factor reasoning, and you have the relative size reasoning. Okay, so let me change it up here. Okay, so a little bit bigger here. Okay, how about we'll start, try this one. Now I'm going to, the red one, I'm going to take it way out. Let's see here. Here. Okay, so I'm going to take the red one out to there. Is that far enough? Let's see. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe a little further. Okay, and now your goal is to predict where the blue will end up. Talk about it. Where's Savannah? Savannah, what's your guess and why? Okay, she said the red bar is four times as large as the blue bar, so there's kind of a missing link there, so, so why D? Okay, so the four times, you're now using it in two plates, you're saying that the red bar is four times the blue bar, but then we're, you're also saying that we're going to move the blue bar four times? What's your name again? Kaiser. Kaiser? What do you think? So the point of the red line, you move like four times, you multiply the blue line four times. Okay, what kind of reasoning is that? Gonna... Scaling. Okay. What did you think about his reasoning? We're gonna the red bar is gonna get scaled four times. Therefore, the blue bar will get scaled scaled four times. Agree with that? A little bit more than four. It's like four and a little bit four. But I wasn't at D though. I was like right up in front of P. In between D. So both of both. You're saying around D or E? Okay, let's see. Okay, so the, the scale there, so it's a little hard to see, but the scale was actually closer to, the, the scaling factor was closer to, It's, yeah, it's kind of, it's hard to see. It's actually closer to five. Yeah. So here, here we were. This is where we started. This is about five. The red bar is now five times as long as it was. And so therefore the blue bar needs to be five times as long as it was. Type of reasoning? Yes, sir? Well, I was just going to say the blue bar would be 
red bar plus one blue bar. It's the same red bar. I forget what they said earlier. Someone said it was blue bar originally was about one fourth the size of the red bar. Okay, so now is that the same thing as the scaling factor of five? No, that would be uh, like you said, the relative size. Relative size. The blue. This is good. So now, the, if the blue bar is where are we? The blue bar is, what do you think the relative size is? And this was also what she said? One fourth the size of the One fourth the size. Okay, so therefore? Therefore, if you, if you increase the red bar um, by five times its length, it would just increase the uh, blue bar. And the blue bar would be, um, four times the blue bar would be the length of the red bar. Okay, so you're mi you're mixing now. You're using you're trying to reason both ways, right? You only you only need one. So, you said that the blue bar is what relative to the red bar. One fourth. Okay, so now I'm going to move the red bar out to here. I'm going to move it right out to here. Okay, which is also this quantity here. So where will the blue bar end up? What's that? That's it. You're done, right? So you don't have to talk about times five anymore. That, that scaling factor doesn't matter. We know the blue bar is always one quarter of the red. If I move the red to here, the blue bar will end up one quarter of the way to here. Type of reasoning? Relative size. Relative size, right? Relative size. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is suppose that I, I'm going to take this blue bar and I'm going to flip it and put it vertically on the end of the red bar. Your last problem in your homework was worded poorly. That's what it was intending to say. Not to flip them both, but just to take this one. Sorry about that. I'll take this one, okay? We're going to take the blue one and we're going to flip it. 90 degrees and stick it on the end of the red bar. But now, as I change the red bar, the blue and the red bar will still change the same way they did before when they were both horizontal. It's just now the blue bar is always sitting on the end of the red bar. So I'm gonna, we're going to make that flip. And if I were to change the, ex extend the quantity or the increase the quantity of the red bar, so imagine what you will see. So think about that. If we were to place the blue bar so it's always here, and then increase the quantity represented by the red bar, what will you see? Think about it and then talk to someone. Okay, ready? I'm going to flip it. Here we go. See that? Want to see it again? Okay, watch. Ready? Here we go. There. <laughs> so now, as I, if we keep the blue bar there at the end of the red bar, and I increase the quantity represented by the red bar, what are you going to see? What's that? You're going to see. You're going to see an axis when I do that. See a slope. See a triangle. Yeah. Put the hypotenuse on there. Oh, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you put the hypotenuse on there and then you started expanding it, they'd all be similar triangles. Similar triangles, okay. What were you going to say? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. And I forgot. Are the blues four to one of the red bar? Four to one of the red The blues relative size to the red is one quarter. Right, so that first angle is going to be angle. Yeah, you guys are extrapolating. All I'm going to do is, all I'm going to do, now this picture is increase the. Increase the size of the red bar. 
So they're, they're, you're imagining all these things that won't be there, which they're, they're good, it's not incorrect, but all I'm asking is, if I increase the size of the red bar, what will you see? It's um, over there. <laughs> it's going to start again. I was going to come back. So now we're decreasing the quantity of the red bar. Okay? Someone said something about axes. Someone said, yeah. So say more. Say more about axes. Okay, as x increases, so does y. And what, so what would be representing x and what would be representing y? She's saying the red quantity is x and the blue quantity is y. Agree with that? Okay. So let's suppose that the red quantity is... <laughs> represents the volume of water in a bottle. No. Are we okay? There's a button on my little pen and that then reverts it to the mouse pad. Alright, volume of water in a bottle. And we can say that's, say, milliliters. And then the blue, suppose, is the height of the water in centimeters. So if I were to stop this, okay, and if I were to stop this and I were to attend to the top of the blue bar, so I'm, I'm going to say, I want to make this go further. Something went wrong here. What happened? Okay, so I'm going to stop this at some point, and I'm going to tend to this point right here. There's some location at the top of that blue bar if I stop them, right? Okay, so tell me, in ter so think about it, in terms of these quantities, volume of water in the bottle and height of the water in the bottle, what does that point represent? Talk about it, go. Okay, Richard, what does that point represent? <laughs> Water, the volume of water in relation to its height. What do you think? Agree with that? Say again. Tell me your name again. David. What is it? David. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. David. 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 Were you agreeing with that? The height in relation to the volume of water. The point. What does the point represent? Right here, black shirt. What's your name? Jacob. Jacob. Uh, I, I would agree with that. Okay. Does the point represent a relationship? 
What does it re represent? He says the height of the water at that particular volume. What are you going to say in the back? Uh, I was just going to say it's the. Uh, it's the uh, it's the I was going to say it's just the height of the water in milliliters. The height of the water, so that point represents the height of the water in milliliters. Yeah. Does it represent a volume of water? No. So lots of people are saying no. Julie's saying yes. That point is based on not only the height of the bar, but also the length of the red bar. Is that true? Yes. OK, so how many pieces of information does that point represent? It represents two pieces of information. It represents a volume of water and a corresponding height of the water. So that point is like a package of information of a volume and a corresponding height. What if I change the magnitude of the red bar? Now what? What does that point represent? The point represents a decrease? Now I'm just going to attend to the top of the blue bar. What does that point represent? Tell me in the red shirt. What was your name? Yeah. Yeah? Stephanie. Stephanie. What does this point represent? Um, increase. The point represents an increase? So it represents the same information as this point? Yes, just different numbers. A new volume of water and its corresponding new height, right? So what's different about these is the, the quantities, right? The quantity of volume and height that are, that's associated with it. So we can go back and do one more here. Over there. What does that point at the top of the blue bar represent? What's that? Measured in centimeters when the volume is one point two milliliters. One point four. Yes, you said it's the height of the the water in the bottle in centimeters when the volume is one point four. Okay. What's the same about all these points? What's the same about all of them? What's what relationship? Okay, what's the same about all these? Yeah. Yeah. The scaling factor is like kind of the same as the I think you're thinking the right thing, but the relative size, right? So for each of those packets of information, which is two quantities, what remains the same always is relative size of the blue quantity or our height relative to the red quantity or our volume. Okay. <coughs> Have you looked up in the sky and seen this before? What is it? What's that? I've never seen anything like that. Pretty just random spurts. Of it's what is it? Skywriting. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't have started with that one. How about let's start with this one? Jet vapor. Vapor trail, right? What does a vapor trail show you? What does it tell you? Distance traveled? Does it, the trail tell you how fast it's going? It tells you. It showed you where the plane was, right? It showed you all the places in the sky that the plane was. That's what the trail shows you. So um, I don't want to be on that plane. <laughs> right? OK. So here's two planes. And so we're seeing where each of those planes was at some particular time. It's, it's showing us where the plane was. So let's put a plane on the top of the blue bar. 
Okay. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to put a plane on the top of the blue bar. Can you see it? <laughs> and when we let the red bar, um, we let the red quantity increase, which was our what, volume? We let the volume increase. That plane's going to leave a trail. And what will that trail represent? Trail represent the distance? The Represents the path? What's that? Where it, was. Where it was. And in terms of these quantities of volume and height, what does where it was mean? So talk about that So with your partner. So in terms of volume of water and height of water in the bottle, what does leaving a trail of the top of the blue bar, what does it mean for those two quantities? Go. Okay, someone, anyone think they got a good response? What, in terms of the quantities of volume and height relative to the bottle, what does the trail left by the top of the blue bar represent? What's that? Mm. What's that? How they change together? Rate of change? It's what the height of the water was at at a given volume. At just one place? At all. At the, DJ. At it's a collection of every single point where um, the height is at the relative size of one fourth of the volume. Did you hear what he said? Can you say it one more time? It's just a collection of every single point where the height has the relative size of one fourth to the volume. That's what a graph is. It's points. It's not a stick. It's not a bendable wire. It's not a curve. It's points. Each of those points is a packet of information, two quantities and their associated size together. So that trail left by the top of the blue bar is every single, can you see them in the back? Can you see that those, I've shown those points? So when you see a graph, this is the, your image should be of it. All the points that are tracking out the quantity of this x quantity and the y quantity taken together every single point along the way. OK, so that's, one, that's where our goal is to have an image. When we see graphs, that should be your image of it. OK. Um, Sometime today, I'm going to put up some homework and instructions. I think the homework will be due Wednesday, but I want you to look at it so you have questions on Monday, OK? So turning homework in and recitation. A graph is points. That's what a graph is. When you see a graph, it's a collection of points. And each one of those points represents what? <laughs> so, all right. This is the first time I've given you 